بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد يقول الله تبارك وتعالى في كلامه المجيد بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ان نحن نزلنا الذكر وانا له لحافظون صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد وبارك وسلم my dear respected brothers and sisters in islam today is the first of ramadan alhamdulillah all praise is for allah that we have this month of ramadan and we are healthy we are alive it makes us appreciate the dua of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that wa balighna ramadan oh allah prolong our life till ramadan just yesterday i received news of a person who passed away in chicago due to covid-19 few hours before ramadan was to begin 6 to 8 hours before ramadan was to begin he left this world and met his maker it is the pure fadl of allah azza wa jal that we have the month of ramadan to not only enjoy but also to reap the benefits and the barakah and the blessings of this month this month is truly azim it is great nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said shahrur ramadan shahrun azim it is a great month shahrun mubarak it is a blessed month how is it great how is it blessed it is not blessed simply because we fast in this month of ramadan no the month of ramadan is blessed and it is unique and it is sanctified it is dignified based on its own merit yes it is sanctified and it has merit because because it is the month in which the quran was revealed there is only one month that is mentioned by name in the quran shahrur ramadan shahrur ramadan alladhi unzila fihi alquran and in that same ayah in that same verse allah mentions the reason for its sanctity the month of ramadan unzila fihi alquran in which the quran was revealed so we realize that the sanctity of this month of ramadan is because of the quran being revealed in this month and what happens when there is a joyous a happy occasion in our life we celebrate it for one day and if it's very joyous uh, then we might celebrate it for 3 days and i have seen weddings that are celebrated for 7 days this is such a joyous occasion for the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the revelation of the quran that we celebrate this occasion not for one day or for 3 days or for 7 days we celebrate this for one whole month This is such a joyous occasion that Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed us with this bounty of the Quran. So, coming back, the blessing, the baraka and the sanctity and the dignity and the holiness of this month of Ramadan is because of the Quran. Yes, we fast in this month which makes it even more dignified, which makes it even more sanctified, which is the cherry on top, nurun ala nur. but the real essence of this month and the and and the merit of and the sanctity of this month is based on the Quran being revealed in this holy month of Ramadan now what is so unique what is so special about the Quran there are many unique qualities of the Quran for starters inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun Quran says indeed Indeed we have sent this Quran and we will protect the Quran. So Allah Azza wa Jal himself has taken the responsibility of protecting the Quran. The other scriptures that came from Allah, the Torah, the Zabur, the Injil, Allah Azza wa Jal did not take responsibility for protecting them. As a matter of fact, Quran says bi mustuhfizu min kitabillah, the responsibility of protecting the books Torah and Zabur were given to the ummah were given to the rabbis were given to the scholars uh, were given to those nations but the Quran Allah Azza wa Jal himself took the responsibility and what happened with the previous books 
Quran states, يُحَرِّفُونَ الْقَلِمَ عَمَّ وَاضِعِهِ They change the words of the Quran. They change the text. Um, they change the words of the Torah. They change the words of the Zabur. They change the words of the Injil. And Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal, because He is the protector of the Quran, the Quran has remained intact, unchanged, word to word, letter to for letter, dot for dot, as it was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the language that it was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the language we have the Quran today. With all due respect, the Injil, what language was it revealed in? It was revealed in Aramaic. It was revealed in Aramaic. Isa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam, Prophet Jesus spoke two languages. Yes, he was bilingual. He spoke Aramaic and he spoke Hebrew, but when it came to writing down, when his disciples, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when they wrote down the Bible, when they wrote down the gospel, decades, decades after Isa alayhi salam, they did not write it down in Aramaic. They did not write it down in Hebrew. They wrote it down in Latin. They wrote it down in the language that was common for the Roman Empire at that time, because the main addresses for the gospel was the Roman Empire. Anyhow, today it is hard to find, today it is hard to find a Bible in the language that Isa salam spoke, uh, Aramaic. It is very difficult to find a Bible in, in Aramaic today. Alhamdulillah, Quran, the Quran that was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through Jibreel alayhi salam is the same Quran that we recite day and night. Allah Azza wa Jal has protected the Quran. Why? One reason, primary reason, is the Quran is the speech of Allah, Kalamullah. The previous scriptures, they were not the, they were not the, the Kalamullah, they were simply Kitabullah. Quran is Kalamullah and Kitabullah. Let me give an example to help us understand. If a friend writes a letter to you and that when you receive that letter, you open the envelope and you read the letter, the message that your friend has written, you read the letter. Now, this is compared to kitab. This is considered a written message. Speech would be what? Speech would be your friend, he picks up his phone and calls you and you pick up the phone and you answer his call and he speaks to you. Now your friend is speaking to you and you hear his voice. You hear the passion in his voice. You hear the emotions in his voice and you hear, you hear the nuances in his voice. Now, now this is considered the speech. Speech is very different than the written message. Huh. So Quran is the speech of Allah. Yes, we have it in written form, so we call it Kitabullah. But in its, but in its raw essential, the Quran is the speech of Allah, Kalamullah. Whereas the Torah is not the speech of Allah. It, the Injil and the Zabur are not the speech of Allah. They are simply Kitabullah. They came to their respective prophets in, in written form as a friend receives a letter from a friend. And also because there was no other revelation to come after Quran. That's why there was a need for, to protect the Quran till the last, till Qiyamah, ila qiyam is sa'a, till the last person to be born in this world, he would receive the revelation from Allah Azza wa Jal as it was revealed. If Allah Azza wa Jal had not taken the responsibility, then the Quran would have also changed as the previous scriptures had changed. The previous scriptures changed but what happened, the Quran came and corrected the mistakes, it corrected the distortions, and now we have a complete version, a protected version from Allah Azza wa Jal. How was the Quran protected? How? We understand why it was protected. I gave two reasons why. Number one, it is Kalamullah. You cannot change the speech of Allah. Number two, there was a need to protect it because it was the last revelation. Now we're coming to a different topic. How was the Quran protected? The Quran was protected. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal, He made an army, a sol a soldiers, soldiers who protected the Quran. Yes, 
when a head of state, a prime minister or the president takes the responsibility of protecting the borders, he himself will not go out with a rifle to protect the borders. But what happens is that an army is recruited and the best and the brightest, they have to pass a physical test. They, they are recruited into this army and the army will protect the borders of the country. Similarly, there's an army of soldiers protecting the Quran. And just like it, the army is divided into three, Navy, Air Force, and Ground Army. Similarly, there are three categories of soldiers. These soldiers of Allah protect the Quran. They are the Qurra. The Qurra protect the pronunciation. The Qari protects the pronunciation of the Quran. Uh, and the Hufaz, Hafiz, protects the words of the Quran. Uh, and the ulama, the scholars, they protect the meaning of the Quran. These three, are, these three groups uh, form the army of Allah Azza wa Jal who protect the Quran. How did, now a little bit about the history of how the Quran was protected by Allah Azza wa Jal from day one. Jibreel alayhi salam came, brought the revelation to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And our messenger, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was the first hafiz of the Quran. Yes, Aish, there were many female hufaz, there were many male hufaz. Aisha radiallahu anha and Hafsa radiallahu anha were the first female hafiz of the Quran. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would recite the Quran, the verses that this verse has been revealed to me. Uh, this surah has been revealed to me. The Sahaba, they would also memorize the Quran. So there were thousands of Hufaz, Hafiz, during the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Apart from that, there was also Sahaba who wrote down the verses of the Quran. And there was one Sahabi, Zayd ibn Thabit, who was the chief scribe. His responsibility, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had instructed him to write down the Quran. So there were Sahaba who wrote down the Quran, not in one book form, but it was written on parchment, it was written on leather, it was written on different material as it was the custom during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Then what happened is that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam left this world. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an is the Khalifa and there was a battle, it was called the Battle of Yamama. Musaylamatul Kazab, Musaylama the liar, who was an imposter, who was a con artist, he, he claimed himself to be a prophet and the believers, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an sent an army to crush Musaylamatul Kazab and his followers. And Musaylamatul Kazab in this battle, in this battle, Musaylamatul Kazab against Musaylamatul Kazab, what happened is 600 Sahaba who were Hafiz who were Hafiz of the Quran, they became Shaheed. They were martyred in this battle. Umar radiallahu an, he came to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an, who was the Khalifa and said, O Khalifa al Muslimin, if you, if, if this continues and the Sahaba are killed in battle or die a natural death, who have, these Sahaba who have memorized the Quran, what will happen to the Quran? Because the main form of protection of the Quran is not the written text, which I call the hard copy. It is the soft copy. It is the Hafiz who has memorized the Quran. Why the written text? The written text can have typos in it. The written text can have mistakes. The written text can change over time. Uh, and that is the mistake that occurred with the previous scriptures. It was only intact in written text. Hmm. Yes, the only person who had memorized the Torah was Musa alayhi salam. The only person who had memorized the Zabur was Dawood alayhi salam. The only person who had memorized the Injil was Isa alayhi salam. No one from their followers had memorized the, the scripture. So this was, so the Quran was protected not by the hard copy, but by the soft copy, the Hufaz who had the Quran in their hearts. So Umar radiallahu an is faced with this dilemma. Abu Bakr radiallahu an, his response was, how, how can I do something that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam has not done? But Umar radiallahu an, based on his deep conviction, kept on insisting and said, inna fi dhalika la khair, indeed there is goodness in it, indeed there is goodness. 
till Abu Bakr radiallahu an also was convinced that this was the right thing to do. Then a committee was established and the head of the committee was Zayd ibn Thabit, the chief scribe during the time of, the, uh, during the time of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What was the process? All the Sahaba who had the original text written in their homes on whatever material were instructed to bring it, to gather it in Masjid al Nabawi. Any Sahabi who had any ayah of the Quran, any portion of the surah, any surah written down, he was instructed to bring it. But it had to be original text. What was original text? Original text was the, te the, the text was written down during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, while he was alive. And, and he had to provide two witnesses. He had to provide two witnesses that this was written during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was considered original text. Original text was brought was gathered in Masjid al Nabawi. And then all the Hufas, all those Sahaba who had memorized the Quran, uh, Ubay ibn Qab, chief reciter, and others, they, were, they all came and now their recitation was compared to the written text, the original text. Their recitation was compared to the text. The soft copy was compared with the hard copy. And corrections were made to the text. Normally what happens, if a student of mine memorizes a surah, he will bring the surah, he will bring, uh, he has memorized the uh, surah of the Quran, I will open the Quran and compare his recitation with the text. And if, and if he does not read according to the text, I will make a correction and say, you are wrong, look here, this is what the Quran says, you have made a mistake here in your, in your memorization. But what happened here was the opposite happened. In other words, the text was corrected based on the recitation of the Hufaz, those who had memorized the Quran. And this process happened again and again with every Hafiz till we had, till we had a text that was 100% that was accurate with the recitation of all the Hufaz of all those who had memorized the Quran. And then the, this written compiled text was given to the daughter of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an, Aisha radiallahu anha for safekeeping. Why was it given to her? Because Abu Bakr radiallahu an was the Khalifa. If he needed the written text, he could easily have access to it. It was with his daughter. Then what happened is during the time of Umar radiallahu an, and during the time of Uthman radiallahu an, Islam spread far and wide, north and south, east and west, from the west coast of Africa to the borders of Pakistan, Afghanistan, and it spread north from Azerbaijan to south to Sudan. And millions and millions of people accepted Islam, and they started writing the Quran. They started writing the Quran from what they heard and from what they had memorized in these far and distant lands. They started writing the Quran, and but, they were writing the Quran in their own dialect or they were writing it with, the, with brief footnotes and explanations and there was a fear, it, there was a genuine fear that this would be taken as the actual Quran, this writ, what people had written throughout the lands uh, in their own languages. So then, during the time of Usman radiallahu an, Usman radiallahu an, he ordered that all what people had written should be sent to Medina. And then he had it burned and the original written copy that was made during the time of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an, that original copy was brought out and copies were made, seven copies were made and distributed to the seven main cities of the Islamic empire, Basra, Kufa, Mecca, Medina, Damascus, like we have London, New York, Paris, Tokyo, Moscow, you have main cities. So these official government copies were distributed in the lands. And this was, and if anyone wanted to write the Quran uh, in their own handwriting, there were no printing press, no publishing companies. If, everyone, if anyone write, wanted to write the Quran, they would have to 
they would have to borrow the government copy and write the Quran in their own, uh, in, uh, in their own uh, handwriting, and then they would uh, have their own copy, a handwritten copy of the Quran. But again, the chief form of protection, the primary form of protecting the Quran is, is what the Hufaz have in their hearts. And this is how the Quran was protected. This is how Allah Azza wa Jal protected the Quran. We are fortunate. This is the biggest blessing. This is the biggest blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal to us that we, the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, have the Quran, the speech of Allah that we can recite, that we can enjoy and spiritually benefit from, and, and not only benefit from spiritually and gain the rewards and ajar and hasanat and good deeds, but we can also, but the Quran is, a, is our guidance. It is the chief form of guidance. It is what we fall back on whenever we are troubled what to do, what not to do. It is a book of hidayat. It is the book that will take this ummah out from the dark, from its darkness and bring it to light. It will take us, fr it will take us out from a place of, of humility and put us to a place of respect. It will take us out from, from a place of, 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 of weakness and put us in a place of strength. It will, put, it will grant us respect and honor if we were to only make the Quran our guide and follow the instructions of the Quran and, and, and believe and, and not only believe in the Quran and read and recite the Quran, but also to spread the message of the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to benefit from the, uh, from the Quran uh, in this month in this month of Ramadan, which is the month of Quran. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimin. A few announcements. First is that, alhamdulillah, the new masjid, uh, as many of you have seen or driven past, is uh, near completion. We are offering tours on a daily basis, uh, insha'Allah. Uh, the sign-up sheet that only offered tours on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, all the slots have been filled. But we will be opening slots for weeknights, Monday through Friday, in the next few days, inshallah. So keep your eyes open for that. And again, those will be for 10 uh, visitors uh, per day. And you will, be ha you will have the opportunity to pray your first prayer uh, in the masjid in the month of Ramadan, please bring your own prayer mat, your sajada, your musalla, and also you will be uh, uh, you will receive a sumptuous meal, a delicious meal, and iftar, uh, courtesy of Utah Islamic Center, inshallah, when you come for the tour. Uh, so please sign up for the tour, and also starting starting tonight, we will be having we will be having nightly tafsir sessions uh, in which I will be giving a summary of the, of the various surahs of the Quran. And that will be at 9.15. Inshallah, we will go live at 9.15 p.m. And it will take place every night, inshallah, in the month of Ramadan starting tonight. So we hope to, inshallah, see you again tonight. Thank you.